Welcome to the Showfire Live Conference, the platform the Almighty God has given us to make simple, clear, and available the pathway to eternal life. I welcome everyone to the teaching session of the month of October. Our theme for this month is Amazing Possibilities. I know there are amazing possibilities in God for you, for me, for all of us. And to him, our God, be all glory and honor and power and praise. And to Jesus, our Savior, our Redeemer, in Jesus' name. Our text is taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 26. Matthew, chapter 19, verse 26. I read it right away. But Jesus looked at them and said to them, with men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. So what were these impossibilities that Jesus was talking about or the disciples were concerned about? And what are the impossibilities that you yourself, you are concerned about? Think about it as we go on this journey to discover and uncover and establish the amazing possibilities of God for our lives. I pray the almighty God will show up for you in a way that you never imagined in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now, possibilities. You know, often some people want to exchange possibilities with opportunities. In fact, I think I am facilitator subtly battle that small um, because people think possibilities just means a per chance, per chance, you know. But let's keep it this way, very simple, and you can check your dictionary. Just possibilities are happenings. Amen. Is it happening for you? Amen. Possibilities are what happenings, happening, happenings. So what is happening around you? What are your happenings? Amen. I like it here in Nigeria, uh, wherever you're connecting from. Uh, this is one word that they use a lot here in Nigeria. They say somebody is happening or that it is happening there. That's what we're talking about. Hallelujah. Happenings. I say it will happen for you by the God of amazing possibilities. So now amazing, amazing. What is amazing? causing great surprise or wonder, astonishing. So when we say amazing possibilities, hallelujah, we are saying happenings in your life that will cause great surprise or wonder that will be astonishing, hallelujah. Is somebody shouting a glorious amen that in your own life, it will happen. In my own life, it will happen. In our families, they will happen. So raise your voice to heaven and say, Lord Jesus, I am trusting you for the amazing possibilities that you will cause great surprise and wonder and astonishing happenings in my life, in my family, this month, this year, and for the rest of my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. You know, in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, you have to acquaint yourself with a scripture like this. There, the Bible says you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Hallelujah. Are you a Christian? If you are a Christian, this is what we're talking about. A peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, into his marvelous happening. Hallelujah. Marvelous, that's what we're talking about. That's who you are. That's who I am. Oh, we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Some people quote this and speak it out, but have not made it their reality. And so when we're talking about amazing possibilities, we're talking about us coming to live the reality of the life God has given to us. Hallelujah. According to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, as you have just heard, he said, God has chosen you 
and called you, called me, called us for what purpose? That we should show forth the praises of him who has called us out of darkness into where his marvelous light. And that's why Jesus said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good work and glorify your father, which is in heaven. Beloved, there are certain things, certain lives that we live that will never glorify God. No matter how holy you may be or assume that you are, it may, it may never, never glorify God. Rather, it will often bring reproach to the name of your God, the name of my God, the name of our God. And so this is a call to becoming a praise unto God, becoming a praise unto God. I was in one of my parishes uh, that I led before. I used to speak this word a lot and tell people, in fact, it was our welcoming theme. When you come, we welcome you. We tell you that, see here, our central uh, theme or vision or word of faith that we believe is that God has called us to be a praise unto him. A praise unto him. How do you become a praise to God? That God Almighty will do such things in your life that you alone cannot stop praising God. Hallelujah. You cannot stop thanking God like one of the songs says, he's done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. Of course, you remember what the Lord has done for me. I cannot tell it all. You continually praise God and thank God in your life because of what he has done for you. Number two, others then will see this amazing possibilities of God manifesting in your life and they will praise your God. Hallelujah. And God himself, will look at your life like he looked at David. He said, I have found a man after my own heart. He looked at David and said, David, since I have four prophets, four people, I have never asked anybody to build me a house. But you, David, because it has even come into your heart, come into your mind to do this kind of work, <laughs> I, the Lord, say to you, I will build you a house, an everlasting dynasty. I will make your name, David. I will immortalize your name. And indeed, he has done it. So much so that the son of the living God is called the son of David. We're talking about being a praise unto God. Where you yourself cannot cease thanking God. Others will see your life and praise your God. And God himself will look at you and say, have you considered my son? Have you considered my daughter? Glory be to God. We have come into our month of amazing possibilities. So I want to call you to rise up to the reality of this life that God has given to you and I to live. In Isaiah chapter 8, verse 18, Isaiah chapter 8, verse 18, you can open your Bible there. Here, the Bible says, here am I and the children whom the Lord has given me. We are for signs and wonders in Israel. From the Lord of hosts who dwells in Mount Zion. So you modify that now. The Lord is speaking to you. Here am I and the children whom the Lord has given to me. We are for signs and wonders here in the earth, here in the world. Here in my neighborhood, in my community, in my country, in the world at large, we are for signs and wonders. And how does this sign of signs and wonders come? From the Lord of hosts who dwells in Mount Zion. Glory be to God. With that background, let's just look at a few 
just a little tip <laughs> of this amazing wonders of our God. So, if we talk about a man like David, oh, David saw the wonders of God. In Psalm 18, verses 29, and then 34. Let's very quickly just look at that. Psalm 18, 29. It says, for by you, I can run against a troop. By my God, I can leap over a wall. <laughs> this psalm, David wrote it. In your Bible, and that's why you need to, you know, invest in what will help your life, as we would see. In my Bible, Every chapter of the Bible, the background of it is described. So I will just read the background straight so you understand. He said, to the chief musician, a psalm of David, the servant of the Lord, who spoke to the Lord the words of this song on the day that the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. And he said, then the psalm continued. That's the background of Psalm 18 that you have been reading. Now you know how to read Psalms to get the background. Praise the name of the Lord. So, Saul the king, David a youth. As you remember, 17 years old, by the time this whole uh, battle started, the king that rules over the whole nation and a little boy. <laughs> Glory be to God. Our God of amazing possibilities. It must happen in your life. It must happen in my life. Make up your mind and say, in this life, and even this year, 2021, it will not end until it has happened for me. I say it will not end until it has happened for you. It has happened for me. It has happened for your family in the mighty name of Jesus. David, this boy, the king said, I will finish you. The king went after him with the entire troop, the entire army of the land. One little boy. Hey, <laughs> with the army of the whole nation. Yet, 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 one person went down and one person raised his hand and said, by my God, I can run against a troop. By my God, I can leap over a wall because of my God. Shout with me. I serve a God of amazing possibilities. Beloved brothers and sisters, you have come to the time and the moment of all things are possible with God. Tell your neighbor, tell your friends, tell them, I don't know how, but I just know something. I just have some feeling. I just feel the hour has come. The moment has come for me to leap over that wall. Whatever the barrier has been, the time has come. I don't know how. David didn't know how he's going to face the army of a whole nation. Where was he going to hide? But he knew one thing. That he is, he was serving and he, a God of all possibilities. The one that with him, nothing is impossible. He didn't say not, not just shall be. Nothing is impossible. And nothing is too hard. I speak to you that today God will do whatever he has to do for your sake. God will do whatever has to be done. God will do whatever must be done for you to be a praise unto him. Hallelujah. So David. Here said, for 
by you. By whom? By God. I can run against a troop. Another translation, the Berean Bible say, I can run against an army. By my God, I can leap over a wall. I can escape. <laughs> Whatever the situation, I can escape. Whatever situation you are, in the name of the Most High God, you will escape. In the name of Jesus. And I'm speaking that specifically to somebody because I can see somebody in the den. You will escape. Just call on the name of the Lord God Almighty and take the bold step. In the name of Jesus, God is bringing you out of that den. God is bringing you out of that den. I don't want to mention the den so your enemies don't, don't know, but I can see you by the Spirit of God. You are coming out of that den. You are coming out of that den. The Lord is carrying you out by his outstretched arm. According to Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 17. Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 17. We're going to come back to David because somebody needs to come out of that den. Go with me to Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 17. The Bible says, Ah, Lord God, behold. You have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. There is nothing too hard for you. Just as our brother said, you are coming out of that den. God is carrying you with his outstretched arm, by his outstretched arm, I'm bringing you out. Your time of deliverance has come in the name of Jesus. Move and come out of that den in the name of Jesus. So, verse 34 of Psalm 18, David continues. He says, he teaches my hands to make war. He teaches my hands to make war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. Oh, just imagine a bow of bronze. By the anointing and the skills that the most high has taught David. He said, I can bend the bow of bronze. What is impossible with men, with God, all things are possible. Glory be to God. Let's look at Psalm 144. Psalm 144, verse 1. Just a tip, a tip of possibilities that David has shared with us. We'll come back to David. Glory be to God. Psalm 144, verse 1. Are you there? You're there reading with me. He said, bless be the Lord, my rock. And you see where you can see God as your rock. You're saying that rock, whenever it is, it hides you always, in fact. That's, you have a hiding place. Imagine that you are inside a rock and somebody wants to attack you there. The energy, the effort, the person will expend to break the rock. <laughs> By the time the person finishes breaking the rock, you would have been tired and will just be there. You just come and carry all his weapons and crush his head. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that's what was happening in the life of David. It's going to happen for you in the mighty name of Jesus. And it's not just about enemies, it's not just about people, situations, circumstances, life challenges, you will conquer all. This is our year of greater victory. The Lord God Almighty will give you victory in all dimensions of life and existence, spiritually, physically, materially, socially, mentally, societally, whatever dimension you can mention in status, God will give you victory. God will give me victory. God will give us victory. And you continue to grow from strength to strength and from grace to grace and from glory to glory in the name of Jesus Christ. So David said, blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers to battle. God teaches skills, brothers and sisters. 
You've been struggling for too long, wondering, how do I do this? How do I do that? There is God that teaches skills. Oh, you don't believe me? Let's see again another tip. Let's go to Exodus. Exodus 31, we start from verse 1. Glory be to God. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, See, I have called by name Bazalel, the son of Uzri, Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship to design artistic works, to work in gold, in silver, in bronze in cutting jewels for setting, in carving wood, and to work in all manner of workmanship. And I indeed, I have appointed with him Aholia, the son of Ahisamak of the tribe of Dan. And I have put wisdom in the hearts of all the gifted artisans that they may Make all that I have commanded you. Beloved brothers and sisters, and I'm not telling you theory here. I'm telling you what I have experienced. And that's what we're going to be teaching and exploring. There is so much possibilities in God. Your God, I mean your God, I mean your Father. There is so much possibilities. I think I shared one once when there was a course in school that uh, the lecturer always gives his assignment and if once you can solve this assignment, uh, he will just give you A because it was practically impossible to solve it. And I took this assignment and went to God. <laughs> I didn't even know, but I tried to solve this assignment. I couldn't make any headway. And none of my classmates could solve it. I went, I was praying in my normal prayer, but I had the books with me. So he just touched me and said, ah, no, bring this assignment and solve it here. I started working on this assignment. But I will get stuck and then I will pray. I will, my eyes will be open. I will follow, pray, and continue. So I got to a point. There was no way to move forward. Here is our goal. As I was praying, there is a book we're using to solve the assignment. The Spirit of God spoke to me and said, the equation to move forward is in another book. <laughs> I went to the book, saw the equation, brought it together. This was what the lecturer did, used two books. So there is no way you could use one book to solve. And so that gave, and brought the equation and added together and I was able to solve the assignment and got the answer and I just got up and praised God. You see, when God gives you certain key, you know how this, our God, how sweet it is. And that key has worked for me and it will work for you. The problem is we don't spend time to explore this, our God. I can count many times when the Lord has given me keys that has helped my life. So God gives skills, God teaches skills. David here said the Lord taught him war he, because that was his time. That was what it was important at that time. In his time as a king, your enemies will come to just raid you and take over the land. But God taught him and God gave him victory over all his enemies as we read, skills. And you could see here, God, the Bible says, God, God himself spoke, he said, I have filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding. And it wasn't one person. There were many. I said, and this was people in the old covenant. How much more? Now that the Holy Spirit lives in us, lives with us. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Ah, it's wonderful. You know, we're just touching on the introduction to this topic. 
So let's look briefly at what Paul said. Paul, you know, Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So God gives strength, hallelujah. That is Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I say the Lord will strengthen you. The Lord has strengthened you already by his spirit, and he will continue to strengthen you. Glory be to God. Now, we've seen just a little few. I was saying, keep at the back of your mind, when Jesus said, look, with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. And I say, what are these impossibilities with men? I think I've, we've mentioned a few. But let's again go back to that Matthew chapter 19 and take the full context. You know, we're reading verse 26. Let's see a bit more. Verse 25, and when his disciples heard it, they were greatly astonished, saying, who then can be saved? Who then can be saved? That's when Jesus answered them. Maybe we should start all the way from 22. He said, but when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. He had great possessions. Then Jesus said to his disciples, As surely I say to you, that it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. 24. And again, I say to you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. I need to explain this. Because at times some people will read this and make the error. Look at verse 23 said, it is hard for a rich man, which is what Jesus was addressing here. It is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. He didn't talk about a rich man in Christ. Hello, are you there? He was talking about those who trust in their own strengths and their riches. As the Bible says in the book of First Timothy, I believe chapter 6, verse 10. Yes, First Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. It says, for the love of money is a root. I like that translation that says it's a root. That's the New King James Version. Uh, there are other translations that says is the root. So for the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierce themselves through with, with many sorrows. We were just reflecting on this, the, the things, the, the, what is going on in the world now, where young people all want to make it in their 20s, or in fact, before they're even 20s, make it, make it, make it. Yes, that's good. It's a good mindset. And all this make it is about money, nothing more. The world has become addicted to the love of money, and they will do anything just to make money. That's what Jesus was talking about here. How can one be rich and yet be saved, really? That's one of the key contexts of this message that was here. Because the disciples, uh, the story, the, the, it was about a rich man whom Jesus said, you want to have eternal life? You want to have a place in God? Go. I think I should just read the whole story so we hear it. Verse 16. Now behold, one came and said to him, good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? What good thing? Not that. What good thing? And we know eternal life doesn't come by your good thing. Hallelujah. Yes, the good things are necessary, are required, but eternal life comes 
through Jesus Christ himself. And that's what he was trying to point the man to. <laughs> Glory be to God. 17. So he said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but one that is God. No one is good but one that is God. And so Jesus was telling him here, you are calling me good. Do you know who I am? Are you calling me good because you know who I am? For no one is good except one that is God. But Jesus wasn't calling himself. You know, at times I talk, I, I keep saying, I, I want to keep away from this because of the confusion that people at times run themselves into. The deity of God, and I mean of Jesus, the deity of Jesus cannot be uh, argued. That's what Jesus was referring to here. He wasn't saying he is the father. I keep using, making that term clear. When the Bible is using God as a deity and God as the father, the almighty father, the distinct person. So Jesus here said, no one is good except one that is God. But if you want to enter into life, let's talk about what you're looking for and if you're calling me good. But if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. He said to him, which ones? Jesus said, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not be a false witness. 19, honor your father and your mother and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, all these things I have kept from my youth. What do I still lack? Jesus said to him, if you want to be perfect, go sell what you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come, follow me. Did you see that difference? Follow me. I am the truth, the way, the, way, the truth, and the life. Eternal life is not in those things that you do. Yes, they are important. They are necessary. You must do them. But beyond that, follow me, Jesus. That was the real point Jesus was making here. But look at 22 now that you can understand. Say, but when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions. So he preferred his possessions to Jesus, the savior, the one who gives eternal life. The other point to make uh, here is, Jesus said to him, sell what you have. He didn't say give what you have to the poor. Again, take note of that. Sell what you have and give to the poor. Hello. Again, another thing that some people do, they thought Jesus said here, Give what you have. When you give what you have to the poor, what will you live on? Hello? So he said, sell. So from what you sell, you're going to share with the poor. You're going to minister to the poor. That's what Jesus was really talking about here. So we move on. So it was in this context that the disciples then said, ah, because, you know, the practice then was to exalt people who are high and mighty, give them high places. So the disciples hearing this, the, the disciples then continue. Then Jesus said to his disciples in verse 23, when this young man heard this and was sorrowful, for he had great possessions, and so then Jesus said to his disciples, assuredly I say to you that it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And again, I say to you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. 25, when his disciples heard it, they were greatly astonished, saying, who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said to them, with men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. With God, it is possible for you to have the true riches of God and enter into the kingdom of heaven because Jesus is the savior, hallelujah. Glory be to God. With God, all things are possible. To prove this to you again, look at what Peter then responded in verses 27, 28 and 29, and we'll close it there. Then Peter answered and said to him, see, 
we have left all, followed you. Therefore, what shall we have? Can you now see that Jesus was talking about this balance, the right balance. The love of money is a root of all evil. But Jesus said it is possible with God, the one who gives true riches. Amen. To give you, give me, make us signs and wonders in the earth. Achieve all possibilities in God and enter heaven. But those who love, who allow the love of money to be their driving force as this young man will make shipwreck of their faith. As we read in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, for the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness. And we have seen so many who have started so well, so beautifully, drifted away by the love for money and their greediness and their self-ambitions. Ambition is good, but when it becomes for yourself, no, no, it should always be for the glory of God. That's why we must remember that word. God has made us a praise. We are a praise of God in the earth. That's what this is about, being a praise unto God, not a praise unto ourselves, not being that one man that everybody will talk about even years after you are gone. So unfortunately, that is left in the hand of God. Once we leave this part of eternity, whatever happens to our names, it's it. But thank God for Jesus. More than 2,000 years ago, he left us this great legacy of eternal life. And here we are till today talking about him and enjoying this life that Jesus has given to us. We'll read this through and then we should uh, pause here for any contribution and discussion. Then Peter answered, verse 27 of Matthew chapter 19. Then Peter answered and said to him, see, we have left all and followed you. Therefore, what shall we have? So Jesus said to them, as surely I say to you, that in the regeneration, when the Son of Man sits on the throne of his glory, you who have followed me will also sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands, for my name's sake shall receive how many fold? A hundredfold. Repeat it with me. How many fold? A hundredfold and inherit eternal life. Glory be to God. Did you see now the full scripture? Shall receive in this world what Jesus told the young man to do and come to him. He said, you will receive back in this world a hundredfold of what? Of brothers, of, of houses, of brothers, of sisters, of father, of mother, of wife, of children, of lands in this world. And then what? Eternal life. With God, all these things are possible. I summarize very quickly. There are so there are limitless possibilities with God, but you have to choose. You have to make a choice. What? How do you want to praise God with your life, with the time that you have here on earth? It's up to you. Deuteronomy chapter thirty, verse nineteen. Deuteronomy chapter thirty, verse nineteen. It says, "I said before you, life and death. Choose life." that you may live. I said before you life and death, and death, blessing and cursing, blessing and curse, and curse, rather, blessing and curse. Choose life that you may live. So brothers and sisters, life is a choice, really. Even when you have come into Christ, is a choice. What do you choose for yourself today? This is where we will pause and then we will continue the teaching. As I said, it's introduction. It's introduction. So we'll be addressing the five W's for amazing possibilities in God. The five W's for amazing poss possibilities in God. 
as we come next uh, Sunday. God bless you. Let us pray. Tell him, Lord, help me. This word you have sent to bless my life, give me the grace to receive it and to practice what you say. For Jesus said, it's not the hearers, but the doers. Go ahead and pray and thank God for the word. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. We hand over our lives to you, every one of us. Lord, we pray, keep us by your spirit and continue to teach us your word. As we go this whole month of October, listening to your limitless possibilities, your amazing possibilities. And let this life manifest in our lives. Lord, is there anyone connecting, hearing this message who has not given his life to Jesus? Lord, we pray by your mercy as he or she submits to you, Jesus, surrenders to you. Forgive him, forgive her, wash everyone with the blood of Jesus and pour your spirit anew afresh upon all those who come to Jesus now and transform their lives, transform their heart and grant unto all your children eternal life. Father, take all glory and let your will be done. Today, all through this month, all through this year, 2021 and forever here on earth, as it is in heaven. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen.